John, if you had your time all over again, if we brought the clock back even, say, 50 years, would you do things differently? Well, there are some things I definitely would do differently. There are some where I live even at the latter end of my life with doubts why I'm not sure. And there are some things that I would definitely do the same. Um, if I start perhaps with the negative side, if I had my time over again, I think I would dedicate a larger percentage of my time to two things that may be suffered neglect. One of them is my wife and family. And I think nearly all politicians and public speakers and successful business people like yourself, I think we all have a sense, and especially if we're pioneers, because when you're a pioneer, yet you can't follow someone else's pattern. You've got to create your team and, uh, you know, sometimes I think in business, some workers down the line complain the boss can go and play golf and he's got more money than they have. Uh, but they don't have to spend the sleepless hours early in the morning about what's happened to the stock exchange last night and what it could do to even bring the business down and lose them their jobs. So when you're a pioneer, as I was in a number of fields, you end up with responsibility that, that takes you away from your family inordinately in terms of both time and effort. And you come home to your kids after you've been two or three weeks travelling across Europe, speaking three, four times a day, uh, often getting little more than four hours sleep a night, and you get home and even with your best intentions, you're really not really good stuff for communication with your wife and kids. So I, I think I would give more time mm -hmm. to Glenna and to the children. And secondly, I think if there's been a weakness in my life as a leader, and there's a strength on the other side I'll come to in a minute, but the weakness has been because I'm an ADHD creative person, whipping here and whipping there and creating different new ministries and all that stuff. Because of that, I've tended to train people by simply having this entourage of younger people that have followed with me, and if they've been able to crack the pace, then they've ended up becoming quite outstanding leaders. They've watched what I did, they've learned from me, and some of them have improved on me, some of them have improved on my methods, I'm just thinking of one brother at present, one of the best speakers, I believe, in the history of our God Squad ministry. And from the way things look in the Anglican Church, um, he, I think, will be a bishop before long. Now, my doubtful part is sometimes I wonder if I should have tried to stay more in the system and maybe be a bishop so I could have influence. I talked to the head of the United Church a few weeks ago at their national conference about Aboriginal affairs, and I made mention of this because he remembered me having a mission in this church, and now he's the head of the whole United Church in the country, which is a pretty big denomination. And when I told him that, that I felt a bit lonely and that I missed being at the religious synods with all the other fellows, mm. like when you go to a business conference, mate, and you can all talk about your business and so on. There's something good about that camaraderie and, and fellowship. And I haven't got that. And I said to him, you know, sometimes I wish the system had offered me a job inside. Mm. And he said, John, I'm so glad you didn't. Mm. Because if you'd come inside, you might have ended up in a high position in the church. But we would have boxed you in and the creative work you did in high schools where we did amazing work with a couple of generations of young people. The work you've done in the music industry, which hardly anyone knows about in this country, would have done massive work through all sorts of connections with the arts industry. 
the books that I've written, he said that stuff wouldn't have happened if you locked inside. So that's a part where I think would I have done things differently and sometimes when I'm feeling a little bit down, I don't suffer from clinical depression or anything, but when you just feel a bit on the dark side, I think I should have been more professional gone with the system. But the thing I definitely would say is that while I've trained some outstanding leaders that are now uh, quite a few of them in the Anglican Church and other denominations as very effective leaders, particularly amongst youth, I also lost a lot of my people in the pace mm-hmm. of the thing. And I, I think I would also dedicate a, a, a more substantial amount of my time in sitting with staff and really building the relationship with the staff and and deliberately teaching them. I taught them by doing stuff if they could keep up the pace. And I've got some people probably have some feelings of even maybe mild anger about me because they, some of them thought that I wouldn't respect them if they couldn't crack the pace. And I never felt that. And in fact, I never had very high self-esteem. So when some of these guys improve, I, I sort of saw them as equals, so I didn't really want to sit there and te- teach them. And it was really not being uppity. It was almost the opposite sure. that stopped me from training. But if I had my time again, I would do that. And maybe the, the third thing I would, would have done was get some people together to help me more formally establish long-term media mm-hmm. programs and outlets so that that would still be going because I look at some of these speakers and preachers and others who are my age who are on television have got these programs all the time and I'm not there. Mm. And that's not because I couldn't do it. I could do it as well as them. But I'm not there because I never set up that infrastructure and never gathered around me that group of people. And I wish I had it. I wish I could do that again. But to finish... To go out there and speak a message of hope in a world that's so hopeless, to speak a message of peace and reconciliation in a world that's so warlike and divided, it didn't finish with the Second World War. The world's such a mess. I'm so glad that I spent my life in the public marketplace, not in the chapel, speaking to the people that would never hear it in the church because they'd never be there. I'm so glad I concentrated outside of the walls Mm -hmm. of the sanctuary and spoke at football grounds, in pubs packed out, speaking at the the counter at the bar, at rock concerts, all sorts of places outside. I'm so glad I did that. And finally, I am so glad that all of my life has been shaped by the teaching and example of Jesus. Now, don't look to me to be the best example in the world. I'm not. But what good is in my life comes primarily from a a tireless, dogged, determined commitment to study the teachings of the life of Jesus. And frankly, the answers to all our human conflicts in our country right now are to be found in that sacred story. That I don't regret one bit, and modern science, nothing has dented my my conviction that when I made that decision in my 20s and decided to hold to it for life, it was the best thing I ever did. Uh, well, marrying this woman, who stuck sorry. with me for 50 years, seeing beautiful children and grandchildren, all of that is wonderful too. But the big thing is, I got captured by Jesus and I've remained that way and I don't regret the energy, the huge tiredness, the conflicts, the loneliness when I've copped opposition. Lots of that stuff is nothing compared to that 